Hello fam, it's the 7th of Jan. Little rhyme to that. Happy New Year. This is an interesting time of the year, let's be honest. I assume that most of us might be finishing off the holidays and that most of us might be preparing and gearing up to take on the New Year. How should we go about this? What should we think about? What kind of questions should we ask? What should we prioritize? We recorded a panel discussion in December discussing these topics and answering these questions. Uh, very soon you'll see who took part in the panel discussion. We thought it might be meaningful to record a video like this for this time of the year. Obviously, we won't see each other in person today. We'll see each other again in person next week, the 14th of January at 9.30 for a time of worship and fellowship and word. I'm really, really excited about that. Looking forward to seeing you there. Take some time, sit and reflect and enjoy the discussion. It was a real blessing to me and I pray that it'll be a blessing to you as well. Take care. See you next week. Grace and peace. There we go. <coughs> Good evening, fam. Marvelous to have you on screen. It's the 11th of December. It's just after 8 p.m. I really appreciate you guys being here. For everyone watching, you'll see the return of the Heritage Day panel. Top left on my screen, Bethany and Kuliso Ramashia. How's it, guys? Hey. Hi, guys. And then down bottom on my screen, Connie. Hey. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we had a little <laughs> lag. I was going, Pony. And then nothing. Hi. <laughs> Go. <laughs> it's, good, it's good to have you guys with us. We are Gospel Center Church. So let's start our conversation with a scripture reading. So, Connie, do you mind reading, reading uh, Psalm 138 for us, please? All right. Um, the title is Give Thanks to the Lord. I give you thanks, O Lord. With my whole heart, before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your, state, for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your head against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Amen. Awesome. Thanks for that, Kone. So, guys, this is an interesting time. We want to finish out 2023. We also want to launch well into 2024. And the question that I have on my heart tonight is, what kind of heart will get me to the end of 2023 and will launch me into 2024? And if I just think of the psalm you read now, he mentions a heart overflowing with gratitude to God, verses 1 to 3. Well, oh, that's already a conviction. We can talk about that now. <laughs> and then he talks about a heart longing for the nations to praise God, verses 4 and 5. And then also a wrapper of a conviction for me, a heart trusting in the grace of God. So if it's okay with you guys, let's use Psalm 138 and let's use these key words to talk about how to finish a year well <laughs> and how to start a year well. Disclaimer to everyone watching this conversation, we are not professionals. <laughs> we are just passionate followers of Jesus, wanting to glorify his name and to follow him faithfully. That's really important. Can I pray for us before we start? Mm -hmm. Father God, thank you for another day. Thank you uh, that your mercies were new this morning. Thank you for your grace today. Thank you for your sustenance today. Thank you for moments in which we could experience your kingdom. And uh, thank you that we can be together now and uh, talk about the year um, that has passed and God willing, the year to come. Um, as we talk, we want to be very aware of your spirit leading us in conversation. We want to encourage one another. We want to give hope to one another. 
And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you um, bring forth something fresh tonight in our spirits and in our thinking as we uh, approach the end of this year. I pray that in your name. Amen. 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 So guys, listen, let's start with a stock standard question. How is this time of year for you? Connie, you can go first. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, sure. Yeah, no, this for me, um, and it seems like a pattern, but um, this year, I guess it's it's been tougher than the other years, but um, I'm, re I'm really feeling worn out. Um, I'm exhausted and fatigued, guys. Um, and I just feel like I've honestly got nothing left to give this year, especially in terms of work or any other commitments that require my energy and my, 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 my strength. Um, yeah, but then also, <laughs> uh, I'm quite excited because also it's the festive season. Um, it's also holiday times for, you know, for, for me, cause I'm going to take leave and work is going to close up which means I get to go home to Limpopo and it means I get to spend time with family that I don't get to see throughout the year, childhood friends. Um, yeah. And I also get to relax and just unwind from, from everything that's been going on. But in this moment uh, I'm exhausted because I'm not on leave yet and I'm still at the office. Like even today, um, all my tasks, yeah, it was, yeah, it required, so much strength just to to complete today's um, task, but I'm just trying to wrap everything up before, you know, heading out. So it is a, a tough time. Um, yeah, the body and the mind are just shutting down, but yeah, it's also an exciting time. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. How about you, uh, Kuliso? Yeah, so this time of year is always tough for me, <clears throat> or has been tough since I finished um, finished school, finished varsity. So we don't, in my line of work, we don't really close. Um, so I think the tough thing is that you, the things around you, you see things closing down. I remember a couple of years ago driving into work and I used to work pretty far from home. So it was a national highway um, where people usually travel long distance trips. And like usually in traffic, you see small cars, one or two people in a car dressed in suits. But this time it was people in like vans with caravans, SUVs, people in shorts. And um, so, yeah, that's that's this time of year for me experiencing that. But it's not really like my experience. Um, so I think like Gunny says, you feel the fatigue setting in and I'm just like hoping for a time just to sit and rest. But it doesn't really come. And then the end of the year comes in Jan, you just like back into gear. Um, so yeah, I do tend to struggle at this time of year. I think that yearning for rest, um, but kind of knowing that it probably won't come um, and just trusting that there'll just be something that boosts like a little shot to boost me into the new year. Uh -huh. awesome. Bethany, how about you? Yeah, so um, I get obviously the awesome school <coughs> holidays because um, I'm a teacher, but <laughs> I get to do that with my kids on my own so um <laughs> it's like i don't know maybe i'd prefer to stay at school for the same in some ways um so yeah it's tough because i think it, it's like that it's supposed to be a family time but um it's not really for us i think and i think it's it's intense in the sense of like our boys are going through a really tough discipline patch at the moment like really pushing boundaries like we've never seen before um and we just, I think I'm dealing with that during the day and I'm just at a loss. I think we got to like 8 a.m. this morning and I think I really like, we've had like 10 timeouts and like I've raised my voice a million times and I'm like, this is just 8 a.m., guys. So, um, yeah, I think it's tough. And also like obviously a lot of our friends are off. So it's like, oh, come for over for a bri, let's do this, that and that. But like we just, yeah, like it, we can't do that with could be so. So uh, it's tough because it's it sucks for him, it sucks for us. So I think it's a bit of a bummer. But then at the same time, I've got family close by, so I do a lot with my family, which is a huge blessing. Um, so I think yeah, it's uh, uh, there is a lot of blessing as well and a, a lot of joy. I think as well. Mm -hmm. So I think what's meaningful just of these three reflections is we are not all in sync. 
I think that's a good place to start. It's like everyone's December and festive season and start of the new year doesn't look like mine or like yours. Mm. Like yours. And I mean, you guys have the, the interesting situation of not being out of sync with the bigger community, but also being out of sync in your own house, you know? <laughs> so where we, you have holiday time, probably time that could lead to some reflection and setting goals mm. and stuff with housekeeping. That's not where Kuli is. We might circle back to that later when we talk about, well, how do we set plans? Like, how do we look into the new year? Let's share a little bit of our hearts. Um, if All three of you don't have to answer every question, right? But like, as the answer comes, you can just go for it. So let's talk about thankfulness first. Because both Kone said, it is this, but it's also that. Bethany, you also said, it is this, but it's also that. Um, and I think an important discipline is to, to stop them to say, okay, well, a heart filled with gratitude to God is always a good thing. And that will sustain us through every season. So let's share a little bit of our hearts. What are you thankful for at the moment? And then if you want to, maybe add an answer to how do you grow in gratitude as you go about your life every day? I think I'll go. So I think it's uh, something I've tried to learn, I think, since I started working and, you know, going through this thing of no break and stuff is to kind of step back and ask, well, like, what's the bigger picture? Um, and I think like you, one really breaks it down to first principles as a Christian for me. So like, I don't think it's not often that I'll stop, stop and be thankful for salvation, just like as a Christian um be thankful for community um and it really is it's not it doesn't just come as a knee joke like i think it's only when you start sitting back and it's like i often read stuff about people in countries who can't um what's the word can't meet in community mm -hmm. and practice their religion publicly um yeah so, so i think just like that i think once it's back in you're like sure you know, although I don't have maybe personal rest, there's rest in community and being able to share faith. Um, another thing I think is just resource. So again, I think on the flip side, one is like, sure, you have to work in December. But on the other side of that is that what comes at the end of the work is provision. So like I look around, there's lights in the house, there's food in the fridge, there's fuel in the cars. And there's a security there, a material security, which isn't really threatened or isn't really at risk as a product of being able to work and being able to work through the holiday. Um, so yeah, I think I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, and also uh, the gratefulness I think is for the things that one would otherwise not really be grateful for because the other side of it is things that are like a bit of a schlep, having to wake up early, you know, yeah, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think off the back of, sorry, what, Courtney, did you want to go? No, you can go because you've started. <laughs> I was just going to say off the back of what Kudiso said, I think we've kind of like slowly shifted our vision since we've been married about sort of December and maybe saying we don't necessarily have the time that we would want, but we do have resources to give a bit more. So I think we like try also like, with that gratefulness it's like okay well this is what we've got so this is how we're going to approach it and um trying to sort of morph more into that kind of thing mm -hmm. um which has also been a massive blessing to us as well so also seeing it from that perspective okay i just want to make sure that i hear you correctly you said that one of the blessings of the specific season that you are in is the fact that you can give more in this time and that's something that you are thankful for. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I heard you. Kone? Hey. Okay, so um, I'm really, 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 like, really thankful for God's sustaining grace uh, because, honestly, this year it has seen me through a really trying and uh, tough year, um, you know, and I think... I'm even grateful for for those for those challenges that you know I've gone through because um, through it all it has uh, taught me uh, that I need to recognize God's blessings in my life even in the midst of pain and challenges 
um, you know, this afternoon as I was thinking about it, there's this, I don't know if it's in him, but there's this old song we used to sing in Sunday school. It's, I think it's Count Your Blessings, Name Them One by One, and then See What the Lord Has Done. So when you actually reflect back, guys, honestly, you see how great God has been and how sovereign he's been even through the challenges. And that has really taught me, you know, to be thankful this year. And you mentioned something in the question uh, about it being disciplined. And I know I've learned that it is a discipline. Um, Mm -hmm. It's a training, you know, it doesn't just, I don't think our hearts are naturally inclined to be um, thankful because we always want more and we're always looking out for the things that we do not have, but um, it's a discipline uh, that I have learned uh, this year. Um, also, it has, I think it has grown me in the sense that um, I've also realized that these trials are temporary and they are not permanent, guys. Um, the permanent thing is obviously, you know, it's, 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 it's eternity with Christ and yeah, there's yeah, so there's even a beauty in, 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 in the challenges. So, yeah, so I'm really, really thankful for God's sustaining grace. That's what I'm most, I think, thankful for, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So, guys, I like intense feeling words, right? Words like longing, words like desire, words like hunger. Now, I know that your feelings are not to be trusted, right? We should rather trust in the truth. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But I think that there is something in our feelings that God uses to show us the way, to sanctify us, to grow us, and to lead us, right? So yeah. our deepest desires, God has a lot to do with them. Our deep longings, God has a lot to do with them. So uh, just an open-ended question, as you reflect in this time, right? So we headed to the end, headed to the start. Um, what do you feel a longing for? And then if you want to, maybe answer the second question. How do you know if God is stirring a longing in you? I think for me, I would say there's an element at this time of year that sometimes there are things that you've longed for, physical, like uh, materialistic things or just change of circumstances or whatever, and you get to the end of the year and things are not going to change. Sometimes they get worse. Um, and that creates like this this longing or this desperation almost because I think in our minds, at the close of the year, there, sh- there should be a close of a season or there should be a close of cl- the time of like a season of suffering or a season of difficulty or whatever. And then that doesn't happen. Sometimes it's almost exacerbated. Mm. Um, and I think I would then say it's it's an opportunity for me to turn to God in desperation um, and really like plead with him for, for my heart to change because my circumstances aren't going to change um, as much as I want them to, but my heart needs to change and I need to start January um, with a changed heart, even if it's not going to happen in like four weeks, obviously, but there needs to be a, a mental capacity and a grace that I, I can start the new year with that I'm just not feeling now. Um, right, like, And I think that's sometimes the beauty of, a difficult season or circumstances that we know are not going to change. The longing gets so desperate towards the end of the year that it forces us to pull into Jesus. And I think it also just forces us to realize like the Christmas story is also not glitzy and glamorous and all of that. It's it's not what the world portrays it to be. It's It's such a simplistic, broken story in a sense of redemption and um, just beauty. But yeah, it, I think it just also reminds me, like, what is the main thing here? Like, wh- what am I going back to? What are the basics? What is the truth? And really just to deconstruct that again and again um, and and relook at it. And I think also, like, modeling that for our boys is becoming so important as well. Um, are we, are we going to show them this kind of perfect <coughs> Christmas where, <laughs> you know, the world what the world shows everyone or are we going to show them the the true christian christmas which is very different actually um so yeah 
I just want to jump on that one quickly. Um, I mean, we spoke about the year we've had. And mm. We spoke about we're thankful for God's grace, right? Like, I long in this time to be a bird. There's a lot we can learn from the birds. It's summer now. Mm -hmm. Sun rises early. And the birds sing. And it's beautiful. Mm. If it's rainy and misty, the birds sing. If it's winter, it's cold and it's dark, the birds sing, right? Mm -hmm. So I think of Philippians 4, rejoice, you know, I repeat once again, rejoice, you know, be glad in the Lord. Come right, Shana. I want to be a bird. Because what the year that has passed taught me about God's grace is that even when it is dark and misty and cloudy and cold, He will sustain you and pull you through. So I have reason to see. In those times. And I think sometimes when I reflect on a year and I reflect on the tough seasons, I go, man, I lost my bird edge there. You know? <laughs> like I stopped singing. I stopped being glad. I forgot that the Lord is near. But looking right. back, I see that he was indeed. So like I long mm -hmm. to be a bird, metaphorically speaking, right? Very comfortable in my human body. Just using that <laughs> as a metaphor. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add that with because what you said struck a chord, you know? Mm -hmm. Any other takers on the question? Okay. So for me, uh, the longing has been to detox and let go of um, certain things. So some of those things have become idols, you know, and have taken my attention and my focus away from God and the things that he uh, wants me to focus on. So... Um, how I have known that God is stirring me uh, towards uh, detoxing and letting go of certain things is that there has been such a hunger and a yearning for these things. Uh, uh, I mean, to let go of these things, um, yeah, for, for a while now, you know. And I remember in particular, I was having a conversation, I think last week or week last with my sister, and I wasn't. I hadn't. I hadn't told her um, about you know this this hunger and this yearning and that God is calling me to detox from these idols and whatnot. We're just having a ran random conversation, and then I mean I mentioned something, and she says to me, "Can I just let go? It's okay." And so for me, there's also confirmation mm -hmm. uh, uh, when God is, is you know steering me towards um, that longing. So, so, you know, he'll put that yearning and I think that burning desire in your, in your heart, but he'll also give you confirmation. And I've been at peace, you know, for, for a while about, about these things. Um, so now I'm just waiting for those things to, to go. Uh, but yeah, uh, he, he also gives you that peace. So, you know, uh, that it's definitely God. You can be in that direction. Thank you for that perspective. I mean, we can talk about longing to let go of clutter in your house, or we can talk about longing to let go of stuff that's cluttering your soul. Mm -hmm. When we go to that level, I go, yes, you've got my attention now. Because those are things that are of first importance. Not saying that cluttering your house is a bad idea. Sure, if you have time for it and you want to do it, go for it. But don't miss the opportunity to go much deeper and to reflect much deeper. And to go things much deeper. So thank you for that, Connie. It's a courageous mm -hmm. statement you made. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Lisa, I think I interrupted. Were you on your way to say something? No, just piggybacking on what Connie said. I think it's, and also what you were elaborating on now in terms of clutter of the soul. So I think my longing for some time, but particularly maybe over the past 18 months, has been just peace. So like just the main thing being the main thing and that being what takes up most of the space. So I see it almost like a, like a car or a lunchbox that like it's a fixed space that has a purpose. And I suppose like as a human with human flawed desires and stuff, you want to fill that space with a whole lot of stuff. So a lunchbox that should just have like rice, meat and a vegetable then you put chips and like all sorts of stuff and the lunchbox doesn't want to close and you try and force it and oh. so like i feel like i've been for some time carrying around that full lunchbox and i think underneath there's the stuff that 
needs to be in the lunchbox and travel and do its work. But there's this like stuff just filling in. I think the longing is like for the piece to let that stuff out as as I think when is saying um, and know what should stay in as in what's the main thing. Like just reading the Psalm and stuff, um, just that longing for the nations, you know, to know God's will and to feel it and to feel God, feel God's love. So I think to if that's the mission that we're called to in whatever form, let that be like what occupies our soul and what we're hungry to do and and sort of fill the lunchbox with and let the other clutter just go, like the piece for that. Then the lunchbox is light. It fits in the lunch bag. It, you know, it doesn't rot. And I think it, life just becomes smoother because it's like, you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that. So look, the, the joy about recording a conversation like this and having it on video is people can pause and go back. Right, so that's awesome. We don't have to repeat everything we've said up until now. I just want to make the statement that we've said some weighty and deep stuff that needs some reflection. Okay. Now, in this weighty and deep stuff that needs some reflection, 2024 is coming. Okay. <laughs> and conversations like, what are your New Year's resolutions? What's your new big, hairy, audacious goal for the year? Are you going to do more of X or more of Y this year? You'll hear people say stuff like New Year, New Me. You'll see people post on the socials. These are my 10 new priorities for the new year. Even though I didn't achieve one last year, I've got 10 for the next year to come. And I mean, I'm not saying that all of those conversations are useless conversations. I just think that as Christians, we should have that conversation in light of everything we've said up until this point. Right? And that is God's grace, God's faithfulness, God's calling on our lives. God's promises, transcending our circumstances, uh, us being part of a bigger picture, right, which is the mission of God in the world, in our small little cosmos of, you know, people of Fellowship City. I think we should have the conversation in light of that. So let's jump to this question. Just as you think about approaching next year, what has been helpful to you as a follower of Jesus when it comes to setting goals for a new year? So maybe uh, this might be a bit like abstract, but I would I would always try to set goals that are that are going to bring me closer to the Lord. That's sort of been my pattern in the last two or three years, I think, where there's been more maturity. Um <laughs> so obviously before that it was like we did 20 goals and it, would, it never I mean ask what you saw, it was just a disaster from the first week of January. Mm -hmm. But I think with maturity there obviously comes perspective. So I think what I tr now try and do is set goals that is like, okay, um, how is this going to bring me closer to the Lord? And how is this going to help me honor the Lord more? So for example, if I'm going to set a goal to exercise, which is obviously every year I'm trying to be a little bit better at that because that is a big challenge for me. My goal for exercise is not to get skinny and look great. It's actually my body is a temple of the Lord and I want to honor the Lord. Um, so therefore, I do need to to be healthy and look after it and whatever the case is. So maybe like aligning more uh, my goals in, in that way. Um, all right, I'm doing devotions this X amount of days a week. Um, but then what more can I do? Can I, you know, can I read a book maybe that is also going to enrich that? Or yeah, just trying to do things that I think are practical that are really are going to fit into your schedule, whatever. It's not necessarily going to create a whole new schedule, but at the end of the day, it's also going to bring you closer to Jesus. Yeah. That would be maybe my smaller, small piece of advice. Yeah. So let me just make sure that I hear you correctly. Two simple questions. Will this bring me closer to God? And yeah. Will God. Like that's already a fantastic filter to filter your goals through, you know? Because if you hit a double no, uh, no, it won't, and no, it won't, then the question is, should I then do the hard work of creating time for this and setting time out in my calendar if it's not going to hit one of those two goals, right? Great. Is that what you said? Yes. Right? Yes. Awesome. 
How about you, Kone? What's been helpful to you? Um, well, I don't set goals anymore. Well, not goals, but I don't have news resolutions anymore because, yeah, I, I don't need them. So I think, like, since the last year, well, entering this year, 2023, uh, my approach was to pray about, I think, back to what Bethany said, you know, like, God, uh, align my my desires with what you do mm. for my life. So your will and your purpose for my life and reveal what those things are and then take it as it comes. And also another thing I realized and why I stopped having religious resolutions is because um, you get to the end of the year, you look back and you're disappointed and it feels like mm. you know, it's been a waste of a year and it hasn't because also you have said so many things and that are not attainable as one person and in, in a year because there are all these other things. So if it's to study further, to, you know, like Bethany said, exercise, to get a better job, to all these things, and it's just really, really overwhelming. And do you enjoy these, these things, you know, or is it because of the worldly standard, standards or is it because of God's standards? So for me, it's go, um, ending the year and going into it. It's just praying that, you know, God align my goals. I pray that my goals are aligned with yours and anything that isn't, um, I need to be okay with, you know, with, with, with not happening, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I like that perspective. I mean, we spoke about being thankful, right? So now you reflect on the year and you go, oh, well, there is a lot to be thankful for. I was thankful for many of these things. It's been a good year, tick. Or um, I have grown in my desire to see the nations come to Jesus. Oh, it's been a good year, tick. I'm just using the song. Or something like I grew in the way that I trusted in God's grace this year. It's been a good year, tick. Like mm -hmm. that can go down as it's been a successful year. Thank you, God, for a good year. What you said now is if you focus on your 10 resolutions mm -hmm. uh, in which you all failed or in which all of them you failed, then it's really easy to look back at the year and go, what a lame year. My word, what a waste. Mm -hmm. I and I mean, both are legitimate perspectives, but this perspective will lead you down a really, really dark rabbit hole. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then just kind of white knuckling it again and go, I'm going to try more next year. Like I set 10 goals last year. I failed at all of them 20. I see your 10 and I raise you then because this year is my year. Instead of <laughs> a different perspective in which the things that you were supposed to grow in actually happen, you have a thankful posture towards it. And then you go, you know what, God? more of that for next year. Like if I could have more of that, then you'll be glorified. I'll grow and you'll have your way in me. Let's do it. You know? Am I hearing you? I actually didn't think that we were going to end with recipes or two steps, but hey, you guys are dishing up some good stuff here. Yeah. So let, let's see what, what's uh, what's on your chopping board, mate. Uh, what, what's recipe? What's been out for you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a recipe. I'll just add a little bit of uh, herbs and spices. Ooh, nice. I think <laughs> for me, I think it's just hearing God's voice or listening to God's voice. Mm -hmm. So I think the, um, I often say to Bethany, I think God speaks to us through the things that are pervasive and like repetitive in mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. And I think we all know them. It's that thing that like in a moment you stop and you're like, yeah, this is, God talking to me. And it's often not a nice thing. It's often, you know, it stops you in a moment and you know. Um, so I think I think as Christians, as people, we often silence that voice. And I think that's the voice that God urges us to amplify. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, so my resolution, I suppose, is to like have an ear that's better tuned to that voice. And I think a heart that's more responsive and the nice thing is that it's not like measuring it isn't you don't get to a point where you're like I listened 20 times this year great year I think you as time goes you kind of look back and you're like sure in this type of situation maybe three years ago I would have silenced the voice um, or would have behaved in a way that you know isn't in line with that whereas I think as time goes by you know you'd look back and think you know I'm 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 listening at least. I may not be acting differently. You know, my measurable measurable behavior may not be so much more different, but I'm listening more. 
Um, and I think that's the start, particularly because as Christians, our, you know, our outlook has to, has to start from above. So I think like the thing of setting goals, personal goals and stuff, it's not, it comes from within us. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like, what's the point? Whereas if it's listening to the voice from above, then you know the direction is right. Whether or not you act on it is a different thing, but at least you know your, your compass is facing true north um, and you at least start walking in the right direction. Let me see if I can just kind of pull all the strings of the conversation together. Here's what I heard, right, as your brother in conversation tonight. We said what is in the heart is important at this time of the year. And one shouldn't just brush past it, you know, and go to mm -hmm. outward, material, practical, normal stuff. Like tending to the heart in this time is important. Mm -hmm. And then you guys said um, that a good place to start, if I just think of what you said now, Kuiso, is hearing God's voice and being attuned to God's voice will set the tone for the new year to come. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to grind it out, work through 20 questions, have a massive grid mm -hmm. on your wall with different categories and different timelines. Start with listening closely and then see what God leads you. Mm -hmm. Bethany, you spoke about intimacy and closeness and kind of achieving the big goal for all Christians, and that's honoring God as a good place to start uh, as you think ahead of next year. And Kone, you spoke about um, having a different criteria for what is a successful year and what is not. And maybe laying down an approach to say my goals and the achievement of my goals and all the possible ways that I could tick off my goals, that equates to a successful year versus growing in character, right? And having your heart being transformed, which will lead to your life being transformed which would lead to a successful life and a successful year. That's my best attempt at a conclusion to our conversation. Mm -hmm. Would you guys say that I put it together nicely now, or did I miss something? No, that's great, Reno. Can I maybe just add, like, one thing? Yeah, sure. I think if it's overwhelming, like, so if all those elements for a person who sort of reshifting their focus for goals and things in the new year is very overwhelming. How I would sort of approach it is to pray actively through sort of this time of Advent and the new year and whatever. And I, in the last, and I think it's become quite a trend amongst Christians and everyone now, but I think the Lord will place a word on your heart or a phrase or whatever for the year ahead. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, in the last four years, it's been so helpful to end the year with that word in mind and track the patterns that God has been faithful in that specific word. So, for example, if you choose the word rest, it's a lot easier to get to the end of a year as a sort of doing it for the first time and then track the pattern of rest in that year and point that back to the Lord's sort of command of rest and how he's honored that in your life and how you've honored that um, as well. And I think it, it's a lot, it's it's sort of a start. It's, and then you obviously, it, as Connie says, it becomes a discipline. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really helpful and, and a tangible way of doing it as well. Yeah, I like that. That's a solid, solid piece of advice. I think that's a good way um, to end the conversation. Lots of food for thought. I think a lot of handles. I think a good frame of reference. And I think this conversation personally, like if I would play it back now, it'll be a helpful resource to go, okay, it's the 7th of Jan. The new year is going to start. How am I going to approach this? So guys, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a great conversation. Um, the extreme extrovert that I am, I would have loved if we could have got another 90 minutes. Oh, we're only scratching the surface. <laughs> There's so more to say. There's so much more to say. But I think for tonight, let's finish there. Bethany, will you pray for us, specifically for what you just said? Will you pray for us 
and for our people who might be seeking, wanting to know, and wanting to plan, and wanting to posture their lives for the year to come. They want the Spirit's leading. They want to honor God. Not sure where to start, but like really keen for the journey. Do you mind praying for, for us and for all of those people in our community that might feel that way? Sure, sure. I'll do that. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for the opportunity that we have tonight to have this discussion. Thank you for the vision and the seed that Reno has planted um, in organizing this, Lord, and bringing us together. Um, and Lord, we know that this time of year is not always um, a wonderful, blessed, joyful time for everyone. We know that everyone has different experiences um, and different emotions that they are having to face. Uh, and I just pray that there would be grace and that your grace would be sufficient for each person and each household uh, at this time. And I pray that in all of it, Lord, we would just be brought to our knees again and reminded that the most important thing at this time is Jesus. And in whatever way, may we experience um, Jesus in in our lives and in our personal relationships um, and grow in understanding of him and you. And Lord, as we, we sit and set goals or um, find a way to face the new year and um, attempt to be better Christians and walk this journey closer with you, Lord, I pray that we would really open our hearts to listening to you, reading your word actively and just praying um, over certain things and over the year ahead. And I just pray that in each person's heart, in our church and in our community, you would just speak to them and guide them and give them a purpose for 2024 and that they would know where they are going and that they, there would be a seed and a vision planted in their lives and their hearts for the year ahead um, that they can look forward to just debriefing at the end of next year and seeing your grace and your faithfulness and your mercy and your goodness in their lives um, and, and just seeing your redemptive picture. I pray this in your wonderful, precious name. Amen. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for a phenomenal evening. Take care. God bless. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.